an astronomer <clears throat> and I'm passionate about uh, looking at stars and look at the night sky and trying to identify constellations so that's how I got started off with it and I took it up as a profession and right now I'm a professional astronomer and I'm the director of the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. So the picture out there uh, you can see is a night sky picture taken from one of our observatories which is located in the Leh region of India and the picture you can see is a 2 meter telescope which is installed there and operated from Bangalore. But the night sky taken there is uh, taken through astrophotography. In order to get these wonderful pictures, you need very dark sky. And in order to study the details you see in that picture, which is basically the Milky Way, you need telescopes. And we astronomers basically hunt our uh, light hunters. We hunt for light and photons in the dark sky using sophisticated instruments called telescopes. And making of a telescope is a big project. And depending upon the size of the telescope, this is a two meter class, which is reasonably small. We now embark on the uh, production and uh, making of the 30 meter telescope, which are very ambitious and big projects, which run over decades and uh, uh, by a dedicated team of people. And uh, indeed, when we finally put together these in sophisticated instruments and point to the sky and collect light and see the first picture, it is the light at the end of the tunnel for us. And we go through several such projects and the, uh, the critical aspect of it is that you need to have a critical design and reviews and uh, tests and calibration at each points, identify deliverables which are risky and introduce contingencies at appropriate levels and finish it on schedule and cost and make sure that it produces excellent world class science at the end of the day. So these are the challenges we face and we go in a phased manner to accomplish this. <coughs> Can you go to the next slide please? Yeah. So stars form and die in the universe. When stars form from the huge clouds of hydrogen gas, they form in several numbers and in several sizes. We have a lot of stars which are as small as the sun, and there are a lot more stars which are small, smaller than the sun. We have significantly but a good number of stars which are more massive, which short for a short, uh, live for a shorter period of time, which is about a million years. And within that period, they die as supernovae, which we all have heard of in some form or the other. Supernovae are energetic phenomena where when the star dies, it throws out its outer envelope into the surrounding medium, as you can see in the picture. When you look at sunlight stars, they live for a fairly longer period of time and they end their lives with a very small, hot core with a nebula around them, which we call as planetary nebulae. So why do we study these stars? Can we go to the next slide, please? Um, so these stars are born in these kind of systems. They do not form as single stars. They form in groups. And these groups are of different types and they have different numbers in, uh, uh, in total. And the appearances are different. And when they are nearby in our galaxy, you can separate them and count them. And you can see as individual stars. But when you look at far away galaxies, like the one which is in the bottom picture, you cannot uh, resolve individual stars. And you need several uh, special techniques if you want to look at the nearby galaxies and resolve them. We go into various technological skill sets called adaptive optics, etc., which is the advanced set of technologies, if you want to resolve these. But you, there are innumerable stars and there are different types of stars. You, if you want to study them in detail, you need to get into these, big, push the technology to make uh, excellent instruments to collect the data and analyze them. Not to mention, this produces huge amount of data, so you need uh, computing skills, programming skills, and artificial intelligence and machine learning 
to sort these things out and understand the unknowns. Next slide, please. So we know that the stars which are more massive are hotter. They are bluer. So as we know, the blue things emit more light in the blue, which means they have more energy. They also are hotter. This is from physics. And uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, so we also know that the hotter stars are bigger and brighter, whereas stars like the sun are fainter and cooler. So technology, we, we need to develop to detect these photons which are coming up with these energies. The same camera cannot detect blue light and the red light similarly, and the infrared and the UV and the X-ray. So the detector systems which the astronomers demand push the technology to various limits, which are not present in day-to-day -day life. Next slide, please. Why do we need to study stars? You can see this is one thing which everybody is available, uh, sorry, uh, uh, familiar with. It's a periodic table. You would have seen it at some point of in, in your life. And where do these elements come from? The stars are huge balls of gas. They are hot. If you go towards the interior of stars, they're hotter, much, much hotter. It takes the, the temperature takes it to the level where the nuclei can come together and start fusion. In sun, the hydrogen nuclei fuse to form helium. They're very hot. But if you look at stars which are more massive than the sun, the temperature goes beyond the sun's interior to make sure that much more heavier nuclei can come together to build bigger and bigger nuclei. And that is how these elements are made. So stellar interiors are nuclear reactors, live nuclear reactors. They produce all these elements. And when the stars die, the processed material inside them are thrown into the interstellar medium. And indeed, we are all formed from the stardust. So in order to understand how we form and how life forms and how planets exist around stars, we need to study the stars and how this chemistry happens over there. And um, if we want to study the formation of uh, elements and closer towards the central regions of stars, that happens more in the final stages of the st star's death, which is when more physics and physical and chemical processes happen. And they, at the time, they emit a lot of their radiation in the ultraviolet. And sometimes the matter around, very hot matter around black holes, accreting matter, etc., emitting X-rays. So these are exhorting regions. If you want to study them, you have to go to the UV and X-ray aspect of it. But we cannot put an instrument right down the ground to detect them because the atmosphere stops the rays from coming in. So you are forced to send your instrument up in space. So there is a necessity to have a telescope up in the space to study these systems. So India embarked on the mission of creating a multi-wavelength observatory called AstroSat. This is a loaded slide. You can read it in your uh, leisurely no worries. But just listen to me. This is a multi-wavelength astronomy mission on a, an, orb at an orbit of 650 kilometers. And it is expected to produce uh, or detect light right from X-rays up to visible. And all the five instruments on board will point to one part of the sky and take the data from that particular part of the sky. So you can simultaneously see what is happening out there. So you can imagine the number of uh, different types of detectors on board because the uh, energy is different, number of operations on board is different, and coordinating all this activity from ground in terms of commanding is complex. And not only that, acquiring the status of all the instruments, including the voltages, the temperature, etc., as well as the science data. We call that metadata and the science data. Downloading everything and analyzing to eventually arrive at the science what you want to do is a complex process. And it requires a large number of teams working in synchronization over a very large period of time. That is very important. You can be interested in a project for six months or a year, but we need to get this uh, going for years together 
So this is the challenge which was achieved over, by building it over a decade and it was launched on September 28, 2015. For me, I was involved in the UVIT, which is the Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope. I'm the calibration scientist for it and I worked on it for more than a decade on this. So this is, um, uh, uh, this is the, this, the skeleton diagram. The telescope, as you see, is our tubes. So this has got two tubes. The tubes hold all the optical elements and at one end the light comes out of this tunnel and gets detected in the camera. And it has got three cameras to detect, take simultaneous pictures in the far, near and visual part of the spectrum. And um, this, when you actually put together, this is the picture which you can see as developed and completely integrated. Most of the systems are indigenous, designed by uh, the Indian Institute of Astrophysics where I come from and built in collaboration with other institutions in the country such as the Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics in Pune and the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Bombay and several centers of ISRO. And the detectors which you can see at the end are developed in collaboration with Canada. And what is the challenge in putting this together? This is, as I mentioned, is a UV instrument. It should not have contamination. If it has got molecules with it, you will not be able to detect the, the UV photon entering the tube. So it has to be contaminationless. So we built a state-of-art laboratory in our campus in uh, Hosokote and it is called the NGK uh, Lab for Space Sciences and this is integrated out there. So I go through say, certain things which we go through in this. There are pictures taken from the laboratory. All the components which go into the telescope have to be baked. So it is a rigor you have to follow for a very long duration. The engineers have to follow these protocols strictly and observe it. So it is like the, the, the thing we are going through, the, the social distancing and masking, we have to sustain for a long time. But this is decade, I mean almost five years we had to follow this. A protocol, you have to make sure that you follow it. If you don't follow it, your integrated system is going to fail. So everything has to be baked at a particular temperature. You can see the baking path going into the baking chamber. And you can see the, 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 the primary mirror which is being integrated on an uh, optics table and that mirror is built in Bangalore, Leo, Leo's uh, lab of uh, ISRO. And there is an integrated system, a collimator, which basically simulates the light getting into the telescope. You can see people wearing kits like the PPE and the masks together. So they have to be in it all throughout, as in when you enter the lab for these many years. Yeah, please more. And these are the systems, and the entire uh, integrated testing will go into a vacuum chamber. So that is also there, so one of the things you can see. And they have got doors, two telescopes of doors, that is a very critical component. You launch it up there, and if the doors don't open, that's it. So it was multiple times tested and to make sure that it works. So these space telescopes are such that you cannot repair. So it has to be 100% or 200% foolproof. Go to the next slide. These are more photographs. And you can see the electronics. Electronics also is a very difficult component for space telescopes. The electronics technology has, still has to mature to uh, make sure that they are space grade. What I mean is space grade is the environment in the, uh, the surface of the Earth is much better because the atmosphere stops all your high energy photons. But if you take your electronics up there, it will be hit immediately by high energy particles and it will get destroyed. It can't function. The next one. Uh, so this is the integrated picture of all the payloads which was about to be uh, launched in um, uh, the, uh, the space telescope. This is, uh, this is the AstroSat. The picture is not coming up today. Something has gone wrong with the slides, sorry. Um, yeah, so this is the integrated te telescope. Uh, this telescope is uh, launched on uh, uh, 28th of uh, September 2015 on the PSLV C30. This uh, produced wonderful images and let me go through what happened when the launch happens. So when you launch it, it is on one of the capsules and it gets uh, 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 put it on the orbit at 650 kilometers. And as you saw, there were several instruments. You cannot switch on everything at one go. 
So there is a phased manner in which you go on switching on various things and it's a huge schedule you bring six months prior to the launch so that you know the switch on uh, um, schedule and everything is as per the requirement is uh, uh, put together and what happens is the UV which has got its strict regulations on contamination uh, has to be switched on open at the last because if any other instrument opens and uh, uh, can, uh, uh, some contamination comes out, this should not be spoiled. So we decided to open it two months, but the risk was the door, which had to have a mechanism to open, will open after two months in orbit in colder space. So that risk we had to take. We said, yes, we'll get, get going with it. My, uh, my responsibility was before the launch, put together this test of the components, integrate it together, and I have to predict how it will perform. And I have to verify that my predictions are correct. So after the launch, or at the time, at the time of the launch, I was there at the uh, Shihari quarter. And then at the time of the door opening, I had to be there, and I decided which part of the sky to look to take the first picture. And the first picture should prove that all our cameras, all our systems are working. So it was a very tense moment and make sure that all the commands are correct because we have not done an automatic command yet, we are still doing a manual, so every previous orbit will upload the commands and then have to check, make sure that all the things are correct, it was very tense and of course it opened, the doors were opened on two orbits, the third orbit it was just about to take the picture, it was very very tense and waiting, it opened and took the picture, it went on an immediate shutdown, so it was like a complete shock for us, what's going on there? So we have to literally immediately go back and understand what is going on and rectify it. We knew there were some, uh, some changes and some settings that we made. We cleared it and the next topic we uploaded the commands and the brilliant pictures came. So all the three channels were performing very well and unfortunately we can't see the images. So it started performing well and slowly we ramped up the efficiency of performance because the amount of commanding you need to upload for each uh, operation is quite huge, so slowly we increased it, and this has been performing extremely well for the last five years. Uh, so this is one of the images, uh, which is um, uh, uh, this is a project which is led by me, and I and my students work on it. This takes pictures of uh, dying stars in huge groups and tell us about the late stages of uh, uh, chemistry, chemical production in them, and. This has been performing well, and I also continue to monitor its health and security over, sorry, the sensitivity checks to make sure that it is performing well. And it has been performing absolutely brilliantly in the same sensitivity from the day one. So nothing has gone in terms of far UV. But we lost the near UV channel in one of the operations. It is not switching on. So we have the far UV channel and the visual working perfectly well. Can you try the last one? Okay, that's fine, yeah. So I'm happy to say that this project which took more than a decade saw the light and it is not just saw the light, it has been seeing the light for the last five years. So it is, it is continuing to perform. So it has put India in a very different platform with respect to the international scene. It, it has given us courage, it has given us confidence to move on to the next missions and internationally we then all know that India can do to go to the next level and build bigger telescopes. And uh, it was indeed a, a, a very great experience for me. Thank you.